Welcome to the first video in the cells topic. This is called energy and enzymes, but really it's gonna be an overview of a lot of the basic information that you need to make sure you know for the future videos to really understand it. There's three parts we're gonna cover. We'll crack into the first part, which is cellular structure right away. So what you need to know is that there are animal cells, which is on the left here, and there's plant cells, and they're structured slightly differently. Now they both have a nucleus, which contains their chromosomes and their DNA. They both have a membrane around the cell, and they both have what's called a cytoplasm. So all the stuff basically that isn't a specific feature. So all the filler space in between. But there are also some differences between the two cells. So the first thing to note is the cell wall, a really thick wall which exists around all plant cells. The second thing is that plant cells have things called chloroplasts. To jump ahead of myself a little bit, they make sugar basically so that it feeds the plant. And it's photosynthesis which we'll learn about later. Other things you'll need to know is that there are small organelles, mainly in animal cells but also a little bit in plant cells, called mitochondria. Now these mitochondria turn sugar, also fats and proteins a little bit, but mainly we're going to focus on turning sugar into energy. Now this energy is called ATP, and you're going to hear this come up a lot, so get familiar with it. And the process of turning sugar into ATP is called respiration, because we need oxygen to do it. That's why it relates to breathing. So these are your major differences uh, between plants and animal cells. Okay, let's get on to part two out of three, which is about ATP and learning really what this is. So ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. So what it means is you've got an adenosine here, it's one molecule, attached to three phosphates, hence the tri. And this is your energy. Now the energy comes from this bond back here. It's a really high energy bond between the second and the third phosphates. You don't really need to understand why, just know that there is. So this electron bond can get broken and a whole lot of energy is released into the cell. And that is how a cell turns a high energy molecule called ATP into actual energy. And once a phosphate is gone from it, the third phosphate, it turns into adenosine diphosphate because you've now only got two. Plus one extra phosphate is floating around in the cell. Now this is what ATP actually looks like. You've got your adenosine over here, this big molecule, and then you've got your three phosphate groups. And the term that you need to remember out of all of this is that ATP is the energy currency for cells. It's how energy is stored, and it's specifically stored in this electron bond between the second and third phosphate. All right, let's get on to the third part, the biggest part, which is enzymes. Now, enzymes play a huge role in all of your cells. They speed up the rate of reaction, and they provide structure for your cells to make sure they actually hold their shape. Now, I'm going to focus on the speeding up the rate of reaction part. Now, the proper name for this is a catalyst. They make reactions go faster, and sometimes they make them go much, much, like thousands or millions of times faster. So, for example, you might have product A here. It joins into an enzyme down here. The enzyme helps to break this product apart and sends it away. So, breaking a part of A is really, really helped by the enzyme, which actually does most of the work for it. And enzymes do tons of other useful things throughout your cells. The take home message that you need to have is that an enzyme makes a reaction happen really fast and sometimes reactions can't happen at all without the enzyme. So here are the factors that influence the enzyme activity. There are five. And this is gonna come up throughout future videos and is really important for your explanations right the way through. So you have gotta pay attention to this part. The first thing is temperature. So if you have a cold temperature, enzymes react slowly. So temperature is just the amount of energy something really has. So when they're going slowly, they don't have much energy, they can't do things quickly. You have a medium temperature, they're gonna work at a medium speed. If you have a high temperature, they're gonna work at a fast speed. However, there is a catch. Once you get too hot, the whole enzyme unravels and it gets ruined. If you've seen protein synthesis videos, you'll know that an enzyme is just one long strand that's been wrapped up really nicely to make an enzyme. What happens when you get to too high a temperature, all of the temperature energy unwraps this protein and it can't work anymore. It loses its shape. The word you need to remember is it's been denatured. So here's what it looks like. A beautifully wrapped up protein, lovely spirals, getting unwrapped, doesn't look the same, it doesn't do the same work, it's broken, it's been denatured. The second thing you need to think about is pH. This is how acidic the environment is. So you've got an optimal pH, which is around neutral, around the middle here, and then if you have lots of H+, it makes it really acidic, it's not gonna work. Or if you have too much OH-, it's gonna make it really basic, both of which mean your protein can't work at all. The third thing you need to know are cofactors and coenzymes. 
Now these mean the same thing. They're just a small molecule that helps enzyme to perform their functions. Now we know that enzymes are a long strand that gets wrapped up to a lovely shape, but they actually need help to do that. So there are cofactors which actually bring the whole thing together and hold it together, particularly when we've got a lock and key kind of shape here, so they need to fit together perfectly. Cofactors or coenzymes make sure the shape is created perfectly so that they can do the best reaction possible. So here's a visual example. You might have an enzyme over here, and then you'll have a coenzyme or a cofactor. When you join them together, it actually changes the shape of this active site where the lock and key kind of all slots together. Now the substrate, the thing you're trying to react with, can fit in perfectly. Whereas without this coenzyme, the whole shape is different and the substrate couldn't fit in, the enzyme couldn't do its work. Therefore, no enzyme activity. So this is how cofactors and coenzymes work. The fourth thing you need to know is about enzyme concentration. So if you put lots and lots and lots of enzymes in the same small space, it means any substrate or anything they need to react with is probably gonna bump into an enzyme really quickly because there's so many of them jammed in there and there's more reactions gonna take place. And in exactly the same way. So lots of enzyme equals lots of reactions. In the same way, if you have lots of substrate, lots of the things which are going to do the reaction, jammed in, it's much more likely an enzyme will bump into one of them, assuming you're jamming them all into the same space. So lots of substrate equals lots of reaction as well. Therefore, both enzyme concentration and substrate concentration increase how fast these things can work. So these are the five factors affecting enzyme activity, and these are going to come up again and again in future videos, so you need to know them. All right, here's what you need to know from the video. You need to know there are two different types of cells. There's the plant cell and the animal cell. They have the cell membrane, the nucleus, and the cytoplasm in common. But animal cells have much more mitochondria because they need more energy, and plant cells have this plant wall to hold its structure because they don't have bones, and these chloroplasts for photosynthesis. That's how they make sugars because they don't eat sugar like we do. The second thing you need to remember is that ATP is the energy currency of cells. It's how they store energy and trade energy. So remember that term ATP, it's gonna come up. Third, enzymes are proteins that speed up reactions. They make them happen faster, and there are five things which can affect protein function or enzyme function. The first is temperature. A hotter temperature makes them work faster until you get to a point, and then they denature. Once it gets too hot, they unravel, and they don't work anymore. The second is pH. Too acidic, they're not going to work. Too basic, they're not going to work. The third is these cofactors or coenzymes. These help the protein wrap up in just the right shape so that they can react properly with their substrate. Finally, you've got enzyme concentration and substrate concentration. If you put more enzymes or more reactants, more substrate, all into the same space, they're going to bump into each other a heck of a lot more and more reaction is going to take place. Okay, let's look at a question. What are the structural similarities and differences between animal and plant cells? Okay, so when we look at an animal cell and a plant cell, we know what's similar, the cell membrane, the nucleus, and the cytoplasm. And we know what's different, the mitochondria, there's more of them in an animal cell. And we can also explain that these turn sugar into ATP for respiration. And when looking at plant cells, we know we have the plant cell wall and the chloroplast which create sugars. This is the basics for what you need to know for cells, for energy, that's ATP, and for enzyme activities. So this information is gonna come up in the future.